Good morning. Oh, there's the flies. I had to say good morning too. Well, it's Thursday, the 19th of October. We are moving right along. Kill the flies. <laughs> <clears throat> I hate flies. Oh, man. <clears throat> well, I would talk about the embarrassing speech of our president in Israel yesterday, but do we really want to? Do we? I, I think <clears throat> God is making a mockery of, of all of those political leaders. I mean, they have, uh, I mean, we had Feinstein who was still in office and she was on her deathbed for months, uh, um, but uh, still functioning. <laughs> uh, you, you have uh, McConnell who, um, I, I don't know, just gets lost in space. Uh, you have uh, Pelosi, who, yeah, I mean, all of these people. Uh, Hillary, I mean, Hillary's in her late 70s now. Um, even Trump, late 70s. Uh, Biden is like, I'm sorry, but that guy has... Anyway, it's just... Uh, yeah, anyway, it's a uh, truly a mockery anymore, but, and um, I don't, I don't even know what to think about this Jim Jordan thing and speaker and blah, blah. I have no idea. I, uh, I've always kind of liked Ken Buck. He's always been extremely conservative in his votes, uh, and he keeps voting no, so... I'd be curious to call him and just ask him why, but I don't know. It just seems like a good old boy system, doesn't it? So, but <clears throat> no, it just wakes us up, makes us realize God's the one in charge, not these guys. So <laughs> we will continue to trust the Lord, right? So um, <clears throat> it is, Todd, you're right. It is the live version of Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> and really, you better just laugh about it, or otherwise you're just going to cry and crawl in a hole, all right? And we're not going to do that. So, read something this morning uh, about being a witness, and uh, never really thought about it, but it is... Uh, the, the word witness used in the, uh, in the scriptures, uh, in, in the New Testament, uh, I'm not sure if there's more than one word, but I know one of the words that's used for witness is the very word we get for martyr. And uh, I've been reading the Baptist history book and, and uh, just reminding me of the heritage and, and um, the heritage of, of the Baptist and they're willing to stand against the you know, the, the Church of England and the established, uh, not just Church of England, but all of the established religions of that day, uh, they stood against that and and were willing to die for that. And I'm telling you, in the uh, late 1500s, all of the 1600s in, in Europe was a vicious time for the Baptists. Uh, and then the, the uh, 1700s uh, here in America was uh, extremely tough on, on those that were Baptist. Uh, they were hated. Uh, Culpeper County in Virginia was probably one of the most notorious uh, counties in America at the time in the 1700s that uh, couldn't stand the Baptist. And, and the reason being, uh, the, the biggest reason is that uh, the Baptists teach uh, what we see in the scripture that um, baptism always comes after salvation. And 
uh, and anything other than that is just church tradition. It's not, you're not going to find it in the Bible. You, you cannot find in the Bible anywhere that um, someone uh, baptizes babies or that you baptize anyone before salvation. You cannot find any scriptural proof. It's all church tradition. And so, um, <clears throat> so uh, study it out. You know, I'm not, I'm not here condemning anyone. I'm just saying that's not what the Bible says. And, and we just want to do what the Bible says, right? And do our best to what we know. And, well, there were many who lost their lives for that. And they were ripped out of the pulpits. The churches were burned to the ground. They were burned at the stake. They were hanged. They were uh, uh, thrown in the river and drowned. Um, many were beaten. Many were fined into oblivion where uh, they, they had to stay in jail because they couldn't pay their fines. Uh, I mean, it was just, but they were willing to stand on what they believe. And we we better be that too. I mean, we live in a day and age where everything is questioned, and um, you need to know why why you believe what you believe, and and stand on that, and and uh, make sure that we have biblical uh, proof for the the things that we stand on. So. That's the first thing. And then I also had a thought as I was going to bed last night. Um, I'm sorry, this isn't part of my devotion this morning, but it was something working in my heart last night of just, just being satisfied. You know, our, uh, think about, think about our families. Think about our family. Think about our own lives. Okay. And just ask yourself, are you truly satisfied with, with what God is doing? Are you, uh, are, are we satisfied with, uh, our circumstances in our lives? Are you satisfied with your marriage? Are you, you know, people aren't satisfied with their marriage. They're, they're not satisfied with the way their kids are behaving. They're not satisfied with the jobs their kids have, or they're not satisfied with their own jobs. They're, they're not satisfied with the church. They're not satisfied with, with their hair color. They're not satisfied with their looks. They're, they're not satisfied with the car they drive. We're not satisfied with the home we live in. We're not satisfied with, with, um, like I said, our spouses or the way our children are behaving or, or our jobs or in, you know, it's a wonder God just doesn't wipe us off the map. Uh, you know, I, I just, we, we, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know why, why can we, why is it that we're always struggling with with wanting more and more? And that's why he, he does uh, bring it out so often about covetousness. And we're so often driven by covetousness and coveting what, wanting something that somebody else has or thinking that we deserve more. And look, we don't deserve anything other than eternity in hell, but by God's grace, he saves us and, and establishes us and then blesses us. And we, we really need to, to, to learn to um, retrain our thinking and, and have a more thankful attitude for what we have. And uh, all you got to do is look at the world and become very dissatisfied. You know, I probably shouldn't have started it off talking about what I did because it it, it does, uh, you know, bring a dissatisfaction in, in our politics. And, and, and really, I, I guess the thing about it is you just want justice. You know, you, you want, you want good, just people that, that are moral and, and, uh, you know, God honoring and, and kind and, and it's just not there. So we become dissatisfied and, and, I don't know. I think that uh, we we just need to change our attitude, and and uh, yeah, we need to fight against evil. And there are some things I think that we shouldn't be satisfied with. I don't think we should ever be satisfied with where we are spiritually. I think every day we ought to be growing and and trying to uh, be obedient <clears throat> to where God can conform us into His image and. And so every day we ought to be working on that. But the the things that we have no control over and and the the situations or circumstances that God has us in, then we do need to trust Him in that and and walk closely with Him and and 
you, you know, uh, and learn to be satisfied in certain things and in justice, uh, justice, not equity. You're right. Uh, I mean, and, but here's the thing that can help us with that too, is that, and we're seeing it in Jeremiah, but there is coming a day when God's true justice will be upheld. And that reminds me, and I said this yesterday or day before, it's, it, it's, it amazes me how there are several, there are a few verses that talk about <clears throat> the, uh, the rapture. And praise the Lord, we have those, those verses. But there are a lot more verses dealing with the second coming of Jesus. Why? Because at the second coming of Jesus is the judgment. And that's when true justice is going to be administered. And, and God knows that, and God wants us to know that, and God wants us to live according to that, knowing that one day true justice will be fulfilled. Now, we, we fight against the inequities of this world. We fight against the injustices of the world, and we stand for what's right. And, and I believe that is our obligation, but we also don't give up and quit because it doesn't go the way we want it to. We, we want to stand and, and do our part and knowing that one day, yeah, true justice is coming. And so satisfied and thankful, right? And, and the 10 commandments that they, they would, if we would, you're right, Todd, if everybody in America just follow the 10 commandments, but I find it amazing how we have even taken that out of the courthouse, you know? <laughs> Lawyers didn't like that commandment about thou shall not lie or steal. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I just was given thought and just, just need to be satisfied, right? Pastors are never satisfied with the ministry and they're always seem like they're looking for another one somewhere else and uh, grow where you're planted and, and stay, you know, and uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, uh, anyway, <clears throat> that was just a thought, but I want to go it into Psalm 89, and it's just a reminder how good and how great God is. Look at this. It says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. That, that, and that covenant, he's not going to break. And so Hamas is not, that they might uh, torture and, and um, be a real problem to Israel, but they'll never destroy Israel. And, and these wackadoodles in our own Senate and, and House of Representatives who want to see that, it is not going to happen. Those women will be dead and gone and Israel will still be standing. And so, because God is the one over that, and thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine, as for the world and for the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. I mean, this is our God. He's, he's the one that, that we serve today. He's the one that if we've trusted Christ as our Savior, called on him to forgive us of our sins and, and, and to adopt us into his family, and by faith we're trusting in the saving work of Jesus, then he's our father and he's got this, and it's going to be okay, and and, and we need to uh, trust him. And then this is what it says in verse 14, justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. I mean, that's our God, and that's why we represent that today. Whether whether the world sees it or not, we have to stand for for justice and judgment and mercy and truth. And, and so, uh, and doesn't matter. We just need to do that, and and this world needs that. Our communities need that, and and let us live that way. And then I was reminded of that again here in in First uh, Timothy chapter four. It starts off 
in verse 1, and, and this is what Paul writes to Timothy, who's a young man who's starting to pastor a church. And now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. So, so here, it's not just the outward things, but he's, he's starting to talk about some inner things that, that we need to be doing because these are all attacks on, you know, the, the religious then are starting to make these demands, right? <clears throat> but then he goes on and he says, but refuse profane and old wise fables. Ex and here's, here's the two verses, okay? And exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And so, uh, I mean, and he goes on and, and talks about it and, and uh, um, the, the things that, that he ought to be doing. And, and he says, take heed unto thyself, so take care of yourself spiritually and under the doctrine, under the teaching of God's word, and and continue in them. And so, I mean, look, the the world needs us today not to be angry, not not to just spend all of our time talking about the the inequities of life and talking about the the circus of D.C. and and spend all our time on that. But but what they need are people who are going to tell people about Jesus, but also live in a way that brings honor and glory to Jesus. And that's what we need to be focused on doing. Be kind, be, be considerate, be, be truthful, be honest, you know, be godly, to be, be moral in, in, a, in a biblical fashion and, and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in, in what you tell people and patient with people. You know, be a little bit more understanding with people where they are and try to help them get where they need to be. And, and th that's what our world needs. Our world doesn't have that right now. And, and, and it's turmoil. And, but because of that, there are many people who have, who, who have thought that, that politics was their, you know, their, their stay or the economy was their stay or their job. And they've lost all of that. And, that, and their whole foundation has crumbled, and so now they're trying to rebuild. Well, let's help them rebuild with Christ as the foundation, right? So uh, anyway, and, and, and be satisfied with, with, with things that God's doing in our lives and where he has us in some things and, and trust him more and walk closer to him than we have and, and just know that he's got things under control. So anyway, those are the the thoughts for the day. So it's Thursday. We we need to pray for people. You know, the, there are people dealing with with issues today that, that are they're struggling with, health issues that are terrifying for some. And and you know the the list we had at our church last night for prayer, good lands it was long, you know, and most of it was major health issues and, and we really need to pray for each other. And and you think of someone that you might think is struggling, give them a call today and reach out to them. And, and let's, uh, let's be an encouragement today. Uh, I, I'm telling you, the devil was busy yesterday, but you know what? We got through it and uh, Christ is honored. Christ is glorified and the devil's a loser. So let's get out there, tell somebody about Jesus and encourage a believer. And let's just, uh, just continue to, to push forward and uh, let's honor and glorify God and give the world something that they know nothing about, but let's uh, introduce them to Jesus. So God bless you guys. Let's have a great day.